Okay, let's go ahead and solve for t2. So here I have some sort of equation or formula, and that is s is equal to h over m times t1 minus t2. And what the question is saying is go ahead and rewrite this equation or formula in terms of t2, i.e. t2 is equal to what? Well, it's going to be all these variables over here and some sort of expression on this side of the equation. And uh, if you can actually do this problem, that's a pretty good sign that you're pretty strong in algebra, okay? And this is a, an area that a lot of students struggle with, and that is solving for a specific variable within an uh, equation or formula when there's multiple variables going on like this. This comes up time and time again, not only in algebra and uh, uh, advanced mathematics, but also in science, courses like physics, chemistry, biology, anytime where you're using a formula, you're going to know how to be able to solve for a particular variable within that formula. So anyways, uh, this is a problem that you absolutely should challenge yourself. And of course, I'm going to go through this step by step. But if you want to go ahead and, you know, just see how well you understand algebra right now, go to pause the video and put your answer into the comment section. I'll actually... Um, and I'll show you the answer here momentarily, and then I'm going to go through uh, all the work to show you exactly what to do here. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and if you're struggling in math, please don't give up. That's the worst thing you can do. Uh, I'm telling you right now, take it from me, you can learn mathematics. Anyone could be successful in math, but it requires you, one, to put in the work, but two, most importantly, you need great math instruction. That's clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my math help program. You'll find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will make a dramatic impact in your ability to be successful in mathematics. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of uh, test with a dedicated math section, most of you will be taking a test like this. You may not even realize it. Uh, these would be placement tests going into college, or if you're going to some sort of trade school, you're going to take a test like this. Things like the Alex exam, AccuPlacer, uh, the ASVAB, GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam. Uh, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out, so check uh, that part of my website out. Also, if you homeschool, check out my award-winning middle and high school mathematics courses for homeschoolers. I've been working with homeschoolers for many, many years, uh, so uh, definitely check that out if you homeschool. If you need a pair of great math math notes. Uh, hopefully you have your own. Okay. If you don't, you need to correct this immediately, but you can find my notes, uh, the links to my notes in the description of this video as well. And if this video helps you out, please consider liking and subscribing as this helps me out big time. Okay. So let's get into this problem. As promised, I'm going to give you the answer right now. Okay. Now there could be a slight variation in the form uh, of the answer, but your answer should look like the following. So if you don't want to see the answer quite yet, you want to pause the video and continue to work on it, go ahead and do that. But I'm going to show you the answer right now. Okay. So here it is. Okay. Right now we have this equation or formula. Uh, S is equal to H over M times T1 minus T2. So when we solve for T2, this particular um, formula or equation, when I rewrite it in terms of T2, you should get this. T2 is equal to T1 minus uh, SM or MS uh, over H. Now, you could have negative SM over H plus T1. That would be just kind of shuffling these things around. Or uh, instead of the SM, you could have MS like that. Same thing, but some sort of variation of that. But that's basically it. Okay, so if you got this right, you're like, yep, I got that. Well, I must go ahead and just give you a nice congratulatory, uh, big smiley face and A++. Matter of fact, I'll give you like 130%. And if you were in my algebra course, I might just say, you know what, just go home, uh, play uh, Xbox or do whatever you want to do. Go on Instagram all day. I'll send you your uh, grade in the mail. You must be watching that guy on YouTube. Nice job. Okay. So uh, to get to this from, from here to there, shows me that you have pretty strong uh, algebra skills, okay? All right, so if you didn't get this, man, that's probably a lot of you out there. Let's go ahead and talk about how to get this answer, all right? All right, so first things first. First, we need to understand how to solve for a variable where there's an equation or formula where there's multiple variables going on. So let's take a nice, simple example. 
I love to use this formula because this is a physics formula. F equals MA stands for force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, so if you're taking any sort of physics class or physical science class, you're going to come across this. So let's suppose uh, you were asked to solve for M, which would be the mass. Okay, so we're given F is equal to MA, and it's uh, the way these questions are uh, uh, phrased, it would be like solve for M or write in terms of M, uh, things like that. So basically it means rewrite this uh, formula such that it's M equal, not F equal. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, here is how you uh, think about this. If you're asked to solve for M, you only want to think of this variable that you're, at, you're going to be solving for as the only variable in the problem. You're in your mind's eye, you're going to think of these other variables, you're going to treat them as numbers. You're going to just kind of forget their variables, you're going to think of these as numbers, and you're going to solve for M. So here's the work right here, but let me go ahead and just show you right over here with this example. So let's suppose this F equals MA. Let's put a number for this and let's put a number for this. We'll just make something up easy. So let's put a 10 for that F and for that A, let's just put a two. Okay. And then M, of course, I'm going to treat that as a variable because I'm trying to solve for it. So if you're confused about this, you're like, all right, 10 is equal to M two. Okay. You're like, what does that mean? That's the same thing as two times M. So if I gave you the equation 10 is equal to 2 times m. I'm pretty sure all you uh, out there could be like, oh, okay, I need to divide both sides of the equation by 2 to solve for m. Okay, that's exactly what you need to do. But um, m2 or 2m, it's the same thing. So to solve for m, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, or 10 divided by 2. Okay, so there is the answer. Of course, 10 divided by 2 is 5, but we're just going to leave it like this, okay? Because when, I, when I'm solving for M, when I have my F equals M times A, I'm like, okay, I'm thinking this is my only variable. So now I'm going to, uh, this is like my 2, this is like my 10. So I'm going to divide both sides of the uh, formula by A. So it's going to be F over A, and there you go. Okay, so you need to understand uh, this basic problem before you can take on the problem that I'm uh, going to be doing. Because that's much more advanced, okay? So again... In review, all right, when you're solving for a particular variable, when there's multiple variables going on, uh, the only variable you're solving for, that's the thing you're going to treat as a variable. The other thing is going to think of as numbers, okay? So, and if you get confused, you could just kind of put in some numbers and kind of think about the steps and then try to follow them. Now, along with that, you're also going to have to be very uh, good at just solving equations, okay? You're going to have to know how to solve equations and all the other steps that go along with that, along with these techniques as well. Okay, so let's put this all together and get to this problem. And I'm just going to show you how to do this, okay, very quickly. If you have any questions about um, anything I'm doing here, you're probably at the, I would think probably at the Algebra 1 level or beyond. So I would check out like my Algebra 1 course, my Algebra 2 course, of course, you can find all that stuff in my Math Help program. And uh, you, what you want to be looking at is in the equations chapter, I go over a complete section on uh, how to solve literal equations or specified variable. Okay, so I go over this much more thoroughly, but here is my work. Okay, so um, S is equal to H over M times T1 minus T2. All right, I want to solve for T2. So right off the bat, I'm like, oh, I got a fraction here, so I can get rid of that M. I don't want to deal with fractions, so how do I get rid of fractions in uh, any equation? Just multiply by the LCD. Okay, we only have one denominator, so that's M. So I'm going to multiply the entire equation by M. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's what I'm going to do right there, and that's going to take care of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply everything by M. So M times S is ms or sm, okay, I'll write it that way, and then I have m times this part of the equation, so m times all of this, the m's cross cancel, all right, just to be super clear about that, m times h over m times t1 minus t2, I'm trying to go ahead and squeeze that in there, these m's cross cancel, so I'm left with h uh, times t1 minus t2. Now, notice I have t2 in a different color because this is the variable that I'm solving for, T2. Okay, so in your mind's eye, you see I have this nice color here and breaking it out there. It's to keep you focused on this. This is the name of the game is to get this thing 
uh, T2 by itself, okay? So that's why you'll see this highlighted. And I try to make these nice videos for all my uh, folks out there that watch my videos on YouTube. So by the way, if you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not, hopefully you become a subscriber because uh, I'm putting out massive content all the time on mathematics as teaching math is my passion. All right, so hopefully you understand how I went from here to here. And again, we're keeping our eye on that T2. So what do I do next? Well, I have this H now, so I'm gonna have to use the distributive property. I'm gonna multiply that into both of these terms, okay? This is what you would need to do uh, when you're solving any sort of other type of equation. So if you're struggling with this already, chances are you need work on how to solve equations, linear equations, etc. All right, so uh, that would give us uh, SM is equal to H times T1 or HT1 and then H times this T2. So that's gonna be H times T2. Okay, notice again, I'm keeping that in that one color because that is what we're trying to, that's the only thing we're treating as a variable. All these things we're treating as numbers, okay? This right here is like a number, like seven times three. Just think of this as, an, uh, as a unit, like one number. And this would be like whatever times whatever. It's still like one number. And this is like a number. This is the only variable, okay? So you're gonna have to kind of condition your brain temporarily, you know, when you're doing these type of prompts. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and see what I've done next. So because I, I'm going to be solving for T2, ultimately I want to write T2 is equal to whatever, okay, on the right-hand side. Typically when we write equations, we like, oh, X is equal to 3. We like to have the variable on the left. So right now it's on the right-hand side of the equation. So I'm just going to take this whole thing, okay, the left is equal to the right, the right is equal to the left. So I could take this whole thing and write it over here. So it's going to be H. T1 minus HT2 right over here is equal to SM. Okay, I didn't break anything. I'm just putting that variable on the left. It's just a little format thing. It's just easier to work in uh, this manner. All right, so now let's go ahead and continue on. Okay, so I'm keeping my eye on that T2, and I'm thinking this is like a whole number, that's a number, and this is a number. So if you get confused with this, just replace, just think of this, make up a number. It doesn't make a difference. Make like, say, 7 minus put another number there, maybe three, and then put your T2, because that's what you're trying to solve for, equals another number. So if you had something like this, seven minus three times T2 is equal to two, uh, say seven minus three times T2, matter of fact, let me put like another number, not two, like five, okay? So what, do you, what would you do here? Okay, well, your next step is gonna be subtract this from both sides of the equation, all right? So that's what we have to do, is subtract this HT1 from both sides of the equation. So this minus this is zero, that leaves us with negative HT2, and then SM minus HT1, I can write as SM minus HT1, okay? So again, I'm just conceptually thinking of these steps, all right? All right, and if you have to replace numbers until you get really good at that, that's, per that's perfectly fine, okay? Uh, again, a lot of students struggle with this, but this is uh, really, really important stuff. Okay, now, Again, I'm keeping my eye on the prizes, T2. We're almost there, okay? We're like getting really close. So here I have a difference. Anytime you have a plus or minus with a bunch of variables, always put some uh, parentheses around them. Uh, these were called grouping symbols. This will always uh, serve you well. So just put some parentheses around there. Um, it's a little format uh, type of uh, thing. You don't technically need them. I always like to kind of encourage students to put them in. So at this point, what do I need to do to solve for T2, all right? Super easy, okay? I have to divide both sides of the equation by this, okay? Again, if you get confused, just put a number there, like uh, three times T2 is equal to, uh, this parentheses would be like seven minus five. Although it's like seven minus five is two, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, to solve for this T2, I have to divide both sides of the equation by three, okay? In this case, it's both sides of the equation by that negative H. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this. So we're almost there, okay? We're almost there, but we have to clean this up. So you can't just stop, uh, you know, at this point, okay? Uh, you're like, if you got to this, all right? So here, let's go ahead and actually divide both sides of the equation by negative H. So we're going to get T2 is equal to SM divided by negative H, or let's just say this. Let's say, here, let me actually back up here. Let's say you put your answer your answer is this, okay? This is the, the result dividing both sides of the equation by negative h. This would not be um, fully 
simplify. Let's just say that. Okay, so if you did this, I would give you a happy face. However, maybe not a 100%. So if this question, for example, was out of 10, I might give you seven out of 10, okay, points, because this is not fully simplified. So let's go ahead and fully simplify this. So here, a little technique you can do, I'm dividing both sides of the uh, equation by this negative H, is to split these fractions. So we have S, because I have an H here. I have an H here and I have an H here. I'm trying to maybe do something with that. And you can do that with using this technique. So split these fractions, SM over negative H minus this H uh, T1 over negative H. Now, if these are, look at these denominators. They're the same denominators. So if uh, you were subtracting these fractions, you would just simply subtract the numerator. So the, these two, this is equal, okay? You need to know this technique and algebra. All right, so SM over negative H minus H T1 over negative H. This negative here I can do as a plus negative. So that's gonna be negative H T1 over this negative H, okay? Of course, we have this SM over negative H. Now here I can simplify this better. Negative H divided by negative H, a negative divided by negative is positive. These cross cancel, these H's do, and I'm left with a positive T, okay? So therefore, we finally end up with SM over negative H plus T. That is the fully simplified version. Look at this answer right here, okay? And compare that to if you left your answer like this, okay? This is not fully simplified, okay? This is, and of course, you could write that uh, by shuffling uh, the order of these um, uh, variable uh, terms like this. Either one of these would be correct. Okay, now if you got this all right, you know, without any assistance, you're like, yeah, I got this, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, then I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face. Matter of fact, I think I will give you a good old 1981 uh, Mohawk haircut. Uh, you know, I was in, well, I think I was uh, still in middle school, I believe, at that time. But people walked around with these things and they thought they were pretty cool. Uh, but uh, whatever, you know, they thought, okay, and I didn't wear these, all right? Uh, they just took too much hairspray. But uh, that was pretty impressive, just like your ability to solve these problems, okay? That's like really good stuff if you can actually, you know, handle a problem like this. Now, if you were like a little bit shaky and you still got this right, this is definitely worthy of more practice. And if this problem was too difficult for you, what you need to do is start a more basic problems and work your way up to things like this. But what the worst thing you could do is be like, I'll just skip all this altogether, okay? And hopefully this won't come up in my math classes or algebra classes. Unfortunately, it is, okay? So that's the worst thing you do when it comes to mathematics to just hide from topics. Be like, ooh, I don't like that. I'll just go in a different direction. I'll do this and not that. That doesn't work, okay? That's how you end up, you know, unfortunately failing math courses. Best way to um, be successful in mathematics is one, get yourself a teacher that you like and understand, has clear instruction. Hopefully I can help you out. Hopefully you have a great math teacher already. Um, but if you have access to great math instruction, then you're gonna just have to dive in and build up your math skills one step at a time. All right, hopefully this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget again to like and subscribe. And uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.